takeoff minimums. Why do we even need them? And it's pretty simple. Takeoff minimums help us actually see the runway in questionable weather. Now, in commercial operations, part 121 or 135, you're definitely gonna have to have and look at this chart because that is our, our legal minimums that we can actually take off because we need to see the runway environment. Now, part 91, this really doesn't apply to you. So general aviation aircraft, you can blast off in zero, zero all day. Basically a good rule of thumb, if the ducks don't fly, we shouldn't either. Okay, going down from the chart, you can see it's listed the applicable runways. In this particular case, all runways are listed here. For simplicity's sake, we're gonna start actually from the right side of the chart, we're gonna to go to the left side, which is a little different, but I wanted to, to show you the standards, essentially two engine standards or one engine standard or a three or a four engine standard. And we're gonna look at that right now. As you can see in this chart, this chart's broken down by engine types. Okay, so you have one to two engines, three and four, and the different minimums on the chart. One and two engine aircraft, you need a requirement of RVR 50. Now that's 5,000 feet RVR, or we need a mile. The column next to it, and you can see three and four engine aircraft, you need an RVR of 2,400 or a half mile. I know what you're thinking. A mile visibility in 5,000 foot RVR? That's quite high. Passengers would be upset if we have to delay or cancel a flight because of inclement weather, right? They would be very upset about that. That's why the airlines have a thing called OPSPECs, at least in the United States I'm talking about, right? So it's operational specifications, basically an agreement between the FAA and the airline on what's gonna be accepted, because we're gonna go below these minimums. So you can see this is just standard. So if you didn't have any op specs, you'd follow this chart. Adequate visual reference. What does that actually mean? It means basically runway markings or runway lighting that provides the pilot with the adequate visual reference to continuously identify the takeoff surface and maintain directional control throughout the takeoff run. Honestly, there's a lot in there. Basically it's saying we need the minimum amount visibility to actually see the runway environment. If we can't see the centerline markings because the visibility is bad, well, that's not good or that's not adequate visual reference. So we need adequate visual reference to en enable to take off to see the runway environment. Going to the left side of the chart, we can say, well, Jason, what about all the lights, the lighting that we have, the, all the runway lighting, the centerline lighting, shouldn't the, the visibility go down and the minimums decrease because of that? And the answer is, of course, depending on the lighting. And we're gonna look at that next. So in this particular case, you can see two operating RVRs are required. So remember we talked about the last time with the RVR transmitters, we have to have two at least required. Now remember, there's usually three RVRs. There's a landing, or touchdown zone, there's mid and rollout. So there's usually three we need two to be operational. And the next note, it says all RVRs are controlling. It's not exactly what the visibility says, it's what the RVR is saying. It takes precedent over anything. So that's when you say all RVRs are controlling, your touchdown usually is the one that's the most important, and then the, the next two is mid and roll. All right, so let's look at the chart. We'll look at the column below. You could see we have touchdown zone RVR is 500 in this particular case. Mid is 500 and our rollout is 500 RVR. Three different transmitters there. What do you need? Well, take a look that the, the column above it, you see CL and hurls or H-I-R-L. CL's centerline lights. Hurls are high intensity runway lighting. So let's look at the column next to it to the right, you can see centerline lighting or runway centerline markings, and we need hurls. Look what happens to your RVR. Your touchdown zone goes up to a thousand, your mid is a thousand, and rollout is a thousand. As stated before, some airlines can go below that 500 RVR or the 1000 RVR. If we have certain equipment on the runway, we have operational specifications, uh, we can do it. Right? We can get down, like I said, some airlines can go at 300 RVR, depending, some, some airlines use a HUD, head up guidance displays to help the pilots track the actual runway. In this particular case, we're flying simulators. 
So for us, we might not have op specs, depending if you're flying over a virtual airline or something like that. So what I would do is consult this chart to see, hey, can I legally take off if you wanted to do it, right? Consult the chart now. Now you know what it means. Let's not forget our friends over the pond. Let's go and pull up the Stockholm Alandria chart, 10-9A page. You're gonna see some notes for when the LPV or low visibility procedures are in effect. Looking below that, this chart may be familiar to you. It really depends on runway lighting. Below you could see we have RL, which is runway lighting. Then you have centerline lighting and relevant RVR. Below that, you have touchdown zone mid and rollout. Now the difference here is gonna be in meters. The RVR is essentially 150 meters. That is really the big difference. Everything else is generally the same and it's standard. We hope you enjoyed this quick lesson on takeoff minimums and when to actually use this chart. My name is Jason from Navigraph. Again, we hope you enjoyed this, this airport chart reading series and you're hopefully you're getting something out of it. Please comment below. Let us know what your th thoughts are. Let us know if you're learning something. It's great when you can participate. Remember, check out our products at Navigraph.com. We have some of the best, I believe, charting services in our industry. Until next time, simulated flight, real navigation.